Richard, by the way, you have got this Jeep, something, whatever it is, it's a Jeep. <laughs> Um, again, I was never even going to do a video on this one, but I was like, just doing a few finishing touches, like, there was, Alan prepped this up for me, but I decided to fix a couple of little chips down there, and, um, as I was doing it, I, I remembered a comment that, um, someone left, and I decided to dedicate this video to Nick Joyner, this dude that's, uh, been watching me for a while, I believe, and he left a comment on my previous video saying, um, okay, so what, is, what I said in the video was, caffeine is my drug. Um, you know, that's, that's my drug of choice and I love it. And he said, well, caffeine might be your drug, but um, your videos are my drug. <laughs> you know, so he, like, he loves my vids. So I thought, you know what? It doesn't take a great deal of time out of my day to Flick the cam on, put it on my head while I'm spraying and yeah, get it rolling. So there you go mate, we, we need to, um, you know, it's, it's a healthy and a clean drug. <laughs> Watching gunny videos, so I better give you a fix Nick. But now he's a dude from um, the UK, not sure exactly where in the UK. Um, and yeah, he's got a pretty cool little setup at home and yeah. Uh, he's doing up an MG at the moment. I, I, I believe he's still doing it up. I think he would have uh, told me of the progress if it was finished. But yeah, so Al did the prep work on this one. Alan, my apprentice, did the prep work. Pretty solid prep. One or two little things I just had to go over. It was like one three or maybe three or four little stone chips that I decided to pick up. There's another little one up there. Um, that little one at the front and, a, and maybe a bit of a Scotty around here and here I, I decided to do. Apart from that, pretty damn good prep work out. Keep it up. Definitely makes my day a lot easier and it's been great to have you back. I really did miss you towards the end of last year. Alan? You see that's a bit of a funky something going on in the factory base coat there. It's just a blend area but my colour is actually really good. I checked the colour on this one um, and it was edge to edge man, like edge to edge match. I was still blended obviously but you know, if I get a little bit up here, it's not the end of the world. That bonnet's actually a different colour already. So, I saw that, and then I decided to match it to the side. What are you? That's a bit too low, what are you doing, Gunny? So yeah, DB1, HVLP Plus. They loving this gun for base coat. On the really, really hot days, I'll go HVLP. So he's got the 1.2mm on it. I mean, it, it still is a pretty warm day, but I'm still using the HVLP Plus. I don't know, it just gets a bit of a finer, a finer finish, not so chunky because it's, it's not HDLP. Yeah, as I say, like the only real time I would like want to use a HDLP is when I need to um, because they throw a lot more material out. So, you know, it just puts it on a bit chunkier. I just cut a little bit of colour over them shit. Probably better than a touch up, you know. And as I said, my colour is brilliant. Well down here there's actually, it's not edging up to anything, it's just edging up around here. But, so with these ones here I'll just do a little touch up. Now if I was in the other booth, I'll get my little touch up tips. But I'm in this booth, so after I get this second coat down, I will, um, I'll show you what I'm going to touch it up with.
Right here, so let's do this little touch up. High tech shit right here, Gunners. You saw it first here. There you go, who needs to touch that front? You'd never know, mate, you'd never know. There's another little one here too. So as you can see, it's drying down quite, quite fast, really. So I forgot to put that second coat over here. Yeah, I mean, there's a bit of a tip there, honestly. I would rather have a very minor, very minor, if any, colour difference there. Um, as I said, the colour's great anyway, than a big tip or just touching it up or something like that, you know. So, yeah, I mean... I do my best within, you know, my limitations to get people's cars to look nice for them again. Take pride in your work, you know. So, full band, full fluid, and one bar. So one bar on this digital probably reads about one and a half bar if I was to put it analog gauge on the base of the gun. I've mentioned it a few times but they've changed the position where they measure the pressures from on this. I think they like measure the pressures from here rather than here. So if you put a gauge here, it's going to read differently to when it reads up there. So yeah, just keep that in mind that, uh, yeah, just run lower pressures if you're using the DV1 Digi. If you want, I think the Vilbus actually have a bit of a breakdown, like a, a formulation. You could always do that or just bolt a gauge on and, yeah, either way, whatever. Find what works for you. Just, that's looking all good for now. Um, I'm going to go and mix up the clear. Radio YouTube, let's do this shit. Back to it. So yeah, I went and cleaned out the face coat gun, got the clear mixed up, and yeah, we're just gonna slam a couple of quick coats over these panels. They're actually quite orange peely, these jeeps. They, they don't really have a great finish of, on them. What, what model is it? Compass? That doesn't even say, man. It's just a Jeep. <laughs> That's it. That's all you need to know. It's a Jeep. You know, like, I'm not, my pack rag isn't grabbing all these chunky bits of base coat or anything, so, I mean, after you've been doing this for a while, you just, you just know, 
when you're going to get one to come out fairly clean, and this one's going to come out pretty clean, I can tell. It's nice and smooth, it's, it's, the base coat's not all dry, and yeah, no sand tips, no sand tips around here, gunners. Yeah, oh good, let's do this, so I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> So I mixed up 450 mils, which is you know, probably a little bit on the high side. I just thought they're kind of large, bit bigger panels than usual. And I didn't want to run out of paint, so... I might have to even turn that pressure down on the second coat. It seems to be over-atomizing, just a touch, not, not too much, but... I found that on the hotter days you do have to lower the pressure a little bit. And I think it's to do with, um, well I know, there is like, there's some scientific shit going on behind the scenes mate, on a hot day. Um, basically, what is it? It's to do with volumes of air, and there's probably someone who can explain it better than me, but basically, um, it's something uh, it's, it's a similar principle to how um, cars run better on colder days, like the drags and stuff like that. People do their drag runs in the morning when it's nice and brisk or at night time. There's actually a reason for that because there's more, um, the colder air is denser, so the, the warmer air is like the molecules are further apart. So I actually believe you'll probably be getting the same amount of volume of air out at a lower pressure on the warmer days, if that makes sense. It makes sense in my mind, I just don't know if I um, explained it very well. So you see I just turned that just below two bar, and this feels like it's spraying like my normal pro light. Um, and I could bump, bump that up to two bar, right on two bar, or maybe even over in winter, and it would spray exactly the same. So yeah, my usual is like 130 mils per panel. I have to do those frames so you know, um, Add a bit, they're, they're large doors. So I, I went, uh, so 130 mils per panel got me up to 390, and I just put an extra 60 on for the rest of them. Because those doors are a bit bigger and for the frames, and it's looking like I probably have about 50 mils left over. So, you know, I, I probably could have actually gotten away with my, my calculation. I should have backed myself in, mate, should have trusted myself, but. You know, it's one of those things, you don't want to get halfway through a job like this, finish here and then have to go mix more up and um, go over the whole thing again, you know. So, yeah, that's all good, man. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. It, it is clean. As I said, I knew it was going to be clean. It's kind of got that Jeep feel to it. You know, it's not perfect, but it looks like a Jeep should. It might be a touch dry through here. That should melt in. And it looks like it is melting in. The set that's just starting to melt in, so I'm not, not left with big dry patches or anything. It's, uh, that'll melt down. That'll be fine. So where are we at with our uh, material wasted? I'm actually going to be right on that 50 mils, so 130 mils probably did get me over each panel. Yeah, so you know, the bubbles stopped there, so 
I should have um, <laughs> should have backed myself in, but hey, I'd rather have 50 mils, as I said, than, than run out. So there's the efficient, most efficient spray gun I've ever used for clear coat. And that's another reason I like it. I like the control. You know, it's not too fast, but it's not too slow either. Anyway, I'll give you guys a look over it and we'll call that a bit. And I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Make sure there's no prep scratches we missed. Nah, pretty solid prep there, Al. You've done well, man. Yeah, all good. Right, guys, be back in five.